Hello, hello, it's Julie Davison from juliedavison.com. Welcome to day two of my 12 days of Christmas video series. I did a special gift box with 12 wrapped gifts for customers and many of you participated and are receiving a gift. So if you have not opened your day gift two, do not watch this video or it will be spoiled for you. Um, I... <laughs> I know that each of you are opening your gifts maybe uh, on a different schedule or maybe you already opened them all together. I love that you guys are playing Secret Santa for yourself and that I could play a part in that. The 12 Days of Christmas gift boxes are all sold out. So if you missed out this year, um, then you'll just want to take note and participate next year so you don't miss out on, on all this fun. But you get to participate in part of the fun because you get to watch this video with the reveal. All the 12 Days of Christmas gifts are not holiday holiday themed so you can use these gifts to create gifts to give for the holidays or use throughout the year. Are you guys ready to see what's in package number two? Let's open this up. I'm going to use a pair of scissors though I think you could probably tear it if you if you wanted to. This gift number two is the sentimental rose card kit this probably isn't a surprise because yesterday's gift was the stamp set black and ink spot that came in this kit so all of this comes together as one item and you can purchase this in my online store at juliedavison.com slash shop the kids collection from stampin up makes a really great gift all of these let me actually grab the box and show you I should have had this ready. The kids collection comes packaged in these cute little boxes. I love, I love how these are packaged up. So it is perfect for gift giving and all ready to go. Whether you are um, giving this as a gift or getting one for yourself, they are perfect for creating cards when you're super busy. So we're gonna open this up and we're gonna make the cards in this kit. If you are interested in Stampin' Up's kit collection, there are even more to choose from. Some of the kits involve no stamping, like this kit here, and some of them involve stamping. The ones that involve stamping include a stamp set, a clear block, and a different color ink spot. So this is a great way to build your collection through these kits while becoming more familiar and um, getting used to crafting. Um, so here are the, the cards I shared yesterday. I used some of the clearance rack items along with the stamp set and ink to create these happy birthday cards with the seaside spray. And today we're going to use the stamps ink and block to create the cards in the kit. So let's open this up and see what's inside. Each of these kit collections has materials to make a set of projects. Some of them are cards, some of them are like little treat bags, and each one has um, instructions. So this is very similar to a paper pumpkin kit. In fact, these many of these kits are past paper pumpkin kits that have been brought back because they were so popular. So we've got the instructions that show you step by step which pieces you'll need, where to put the adhesive, and how to assemble the projects. So let's review really quick all these things that come in our kit. We have some adhesive, we've got glue dots, stamp dimensionals, some white twine, some enamel shapes. Then we also have some pre-cut pieces that are colored. These are going to go on our cards. So there are some that are ribbed. And then we have some different different kinds for the three different cards. Then we've got some note card and note card envelopes. I love how these have liners and make them a little special when you open them up. There's like a little little peek of color inside. So I'm gonna set those aside because unless we wanna stamp on them, there's really not much we need to do with the envelopes. We've got pre-printed note cards and they are, there's three different patterns here. There's the yellow pattern and then the print and the circle. So we're going to use these to make three different note card designs. And then we've got some die cut banners. So let's go ahead and punch those out. We're going to use these on the cards. And sometimes there are extra pieces included in the paper pumpkin kit. So you can use them, or not paper pumpkin kit, <laughs> included in the kits. So you can use them to make um, extra projects or if nothing else, you'll have the stamps, which you can use 
after you're done making the kit. So I'm just punching things out, getting things ready to go. We've got a die cut flower. Oh, that's really pretty in the pink. And then some die cut leaves as well. And these coordinate very much with the stamp image. Um, so the ink spot that comes in here is the gray granite, but it's a very similar image um, to the flower that's in there. And then we have, this is really fun because this set of cards uh, fits inside a clear box, which is included in the kit. So this is a really fun kit to either give as a gift or to make up and give finished cards as a gift. So when you're all done with your cards, you can put them in this package and it even has a little belly band and a way to embellish it. Oh, Ah, I should have caught that. There is a film on this clear block, so you'll want to peel that off. And then you just, yes, look at that. Now you have a nice, nice clear box. And this is protecting it from getting scratched in transit and during production. So you'll definitely want to take that film off. And doing a little pre-folding on the lines will just help you to be able to assemble it and have it be nice and straight and even. Okay, so this is going to be the box for the finished cards. And then there's actually a little belly band that fits around the box. So you can package this up cute. So let's make our um, let's make our cards first, and then we can package them in the box and add the belly band and dress it up a little bit. Okay, so I'm looking at the pictures here, and we've got um, three different designs, and, <laughs> and the instructions are in here. So I guess let's just start with card number one. Um, this card uses. Um, this piece that has the pink, yellow, and green in there. And then we also need some of the banners. So let me see, how many cards are there? Three, so I'm, I'm gonna need three of the pointed banners. One, two, three. And then I also need the tags. Uh, for this card, we're using the green tags. And like I said, there are some extra pieces. So if you don't stamp right the first time, you'll be able to um, try again. <laughs> um, so I'm going to die cut or punch out all the tags and have them ready to go. And then we're going to start stamping. And actually, even though we're going to focus on one card at a time, I think it might be easier since we have just one block in the kit to like stamp all of the flowers first and then all of the leaves on all of the cards and then take it off and go on to the next card. So let's grab a grid paper. I'm gonna fold this in half so it's not so big. We are going to stamp off the edges a little bit. So I just wanna make sure that um, I'm not messing up my table. So a piece of scrap paper is good to put down on your desk. And we're gonna start with the big flower and stamp that. So that's gonna go kind of right here where that pink is. And we're using the little Stampin' Spot that came with the kit. So if you got your 12 Days of Christmas box, this is what came yesterday. And if you, um, if you don't have the 12 Days of Christmas box, you can get this Sentimental Rose card kit in my online store and then you can come back and stamp along with me and make your cards. So we're gonna do this three times, one on each of the card pieces. And with bigger stamps like this that are bigger than the Stampin' Spot, I just turn them over on the desk and ink them up evenly. So turn it over, give it a good ink. You don't need to have a big ink pad even for a big stamp like this. And last one for this card, but I do wanna get out the other cards that need to have the flower stamped since we have it on the block. So let's just skip ahead and take a look. This, it looks like this next card, it looks like we just need the leaf stamp and it already has flowers on it. And for the third card, we're going to use the flower up in the corner. So let's see, this is, this is that one. I don't see any yellow on there, but 
I think I just can't see it on the picture. So it looks like this is that way. So we're gonna stamp the flower over here. And this is for the second card. So let's go ahead and stamp our flowers. I'm stamping with um, the bigger white corner up on the right side and that's where I'm going to stamp the flower. So I'm going to stamp on each of these cards. I feel like I need some music or something. Usually I listen to music when I stamp. When you guys craft at home, do you listen to music or are you watching TV maybe? Or do you craft with other people so then you're just talking? I did think about calling mom up to see if she wanted to put this kit together with me, but she has a busy day today and so it didn't work out for mom to stamp with me, but we'll have to do that another time. I think that would really be fun to do a kit together class and you guys could all get the same kit at home and then we could craft together. Okay, we're done with the flowers. So I'm going to get out my Stampin' Chamois and I'm going to clean this off. The Stampin' Chamois is available in the online store and if you don't have one, you can use a wet paper towel to clean off your stamps. You could also use like a baby wipe, but um, sometimes the baby wipes leave fibers on your stamps that then catch in the ink. So I, I try not to use baby wipes to clean the stamps and prefer a wet paper towel. The photopolymer stamps, which are what these are, can actually go right to the sink and be rinsed off under the water. So sometimes I do that if I have a really inky stamp, <laughs> I will just take it right to the sink and rinse it off. And that's the easiest way sometimes to get that ink off. Okay, now we're gonna move on to the leaves. And for this card, the green one, which is card number three, um, the leaf is going to go in the corner. So we're gonna do two leaves on each of those cards. If you enjoy kits like this one, then you should definitely check out Paper Pumpkin. Paper Pumpkin is Stampin' Up's kit subscription, so you can get a new project kit just like this one in your mailbox every single month. The kit that's for December is a card kit, and it's really cute. It's got different fruit in it, and it's like a pun kit. I think it's called so much pun or something like that. It's like a play on words. It's really cute. Um, okay, so those three are done. We're going to bring this one back and let's consult our directions again. It looks like there are also two leaves, one at the top and one at the bottom here. So let's go ahead and do those on the piece for card number three. And then there's actually going to be leaves on the card number two piece as well. So we'll get this done and then we'll look at the directions again. Sometimes, I'm, I mean, I'm, I'm busy. <laughs> we have so much going on with the kids. So sometimes I really love doing a kit because I don't have to think about it. All It is professionally designed by Stampin' Up! Concept Artists and all I have to do is just jump in and create. And so these are really great for not only beginner stampers and new stampers, um, but also just really busy stampers. If you just need something quick and easy, then the kit is a really fun way to do that. And then, like I said, you have this amazing stamp set that you get to hang on to um, and keep and continue to use well after you're done with your kit. Okay, this was card number one, this was card number three, and this piece is for card number two. So let's take a look back at the directions and see. Um, here we go, card number two. So we do need to stamp the leaf. It looks like we're gonna do one over here and then one up in this corner. So let's go ahead and add that now while we have our leaf stamp on the block. Whenever you're doing multiples, like in this kit, it's easy, easiest if you can um, kind of do all of the same thing at once. So I'm doing all of the leaves together, all of the flowers together. Um, I almost wish this would be a little lighter. And you could, if you wanted to, stamp off. Like if that's too dark for you, you can stamp off on the cardstock and then stamp. Oh, I like that better. I think I'm gonna do that on this next card too. So I'm just gonna stamp off and then you still have that leaf, but it's just a little bit lighter. What do you think? Do you like it darker or do you like it a little bit lighter? 
So with the same color ink, you can get multiple variations by stamping off on your scrap paper. So we're gonna stamp on the scrap paper and then stamp on the project to get that lighter version of the color. All right, we're done with the leaf. So I'm going to scoot my grid paper out of the way and let's clean this off. And we'll go back to card number one and do our greeting next. So card number one is this one and the greeting that they're using on the green tag is thank you. So let's get that one out. This stamp set that comes with the sentimental, sentimental Rose Card Kit includes lots of different greetings. You've got Happy Mother's Day, thank you, happy birthday, thinking of you, for you, congratulations, and best wishes. So there's a lot of different options. Let's see what the other cards are going to be. So they've got happy birthday on this one and best wishes on... Um, on this last one. I think that's going to be perfect for my needs. Uh, it's not quite Mother's Day yet, so I don't want to, I'm not going to use the Happy Mother's Day, but I love that it's an option in there for when it is Mother's Day. Um, and I, I'll have a, a stamp that is ready to go because this card would be not only beautiful for Mother's Day, but I think that this would be a really beautiful card set to give to um, someone for Mother's Day, whether it's a friend, a daughter, a sister, um, or a mother, of course, or grandmother, uh, this Sentimental Rose Card Kit would be lovely. My grandmother always loved to get cards for, um, for her birthday or for Mother's Day. We would make her a collection of cards that she could use and send, and so this, this would have been perfect. She really would have loved this Sentimental Rose Card Kit. Okay, I love how this is coming together. So we've got um, our flowers stamped and our thank you stamped. We're also going to need those three banner pieces. And then the note card that we're using for this one is the one with the text on it. And so it looks like that's gonna pink um, on the left side. And then we do have some twine. And so it's saying to wrap around 12 inches of twine and to do a bow. So we have a ruler in here that we can use to measure our twine right here along the edge of the paper. So this is, let's see, this is nine inches and then three more would make 12. So I'm going to trim that. And this is what we're gonna need for all three cards. So I'm just gonna go ahead and cut them all at the same time to make that go a little bit faster. Okay, now we're ready to put this on and they've actually shown you here where to put things like glue dots and stamp and dimensionals. So the little tiny black dots are the glue dots and then the hexagon shape is the stamp and dimensionals. So let's go ahead and add some glue to the back of your pieces. Well, I'm doing my pieces. You do your pieces at home. <laughs> I'm peeling them off with my fingernail, but if you struggle um, with something like that, then you can use you, the tip of your scissors to lift that glue dot and place it where you want it to go. Um, I do find that the glue dots are a little tedious to use. If you don't have any adhesive, then um, you, can use them, but on a normal basis when I'm making kits like this for myself, I usually just bring in and substitute different adhesives. So I have my Stampin' Seal that I use from Stampin' Up, but at home, maybe if you're just getting started and you don't have a big collection, maybe you might get a glue stick or um, or double-sided tape or something like that at home. So it um, looks like we're also going to need glue dots on the back of the banners. So I'm going to add three glue dots to each one. Again, I'm just following the diagram in the directions. If you want to use other adhesive at home, you can. These are double-sided glue dots, but there is a little paper um, film on them that you're gonna have to take off to uncover the other sticky side. So let's do that next. We're done with the glue dots. So again here, I'm just gonna use my fingernail to just take that paper backing off. Um, if you don't have fingernails or you struggle with that, you could use your scissors to just sort of pop the top of that off. So um, 
just kind of get it loose and then you can um, move it there. Okay, so this one is going to go on the card. I'm going right up to the edge, to the right edge of the card front so that all that text is sticking out on the other side. And I'm just gonna smooth over to make sure that those glue dots are sticking where they need to be. Let's go ahead and finish this card by taking the glue dots, the paper off of these. <laughs> Sometimes I just have the right touch and I can get them to just fall off. <laughs> um, so this is going to go on the side. Uh, oh, no, I, <laughs> you know what? I put my um, I put my flower upside down. I think it was supposed to be the other way, but I think it's gonna be. I think it's gonna be just fine. So I'm going to put this, um, I'm gonna put it right here. And then we're going to use Stampin' Dimensionals on the back of the thank you tag. And that's going to go a little bit over like this. Actually, I find that, I'm gonna just take this off really quick. We have some texture here that's a little, it's a little raised already. And so having the stamp of dimensionals kind of be half on and half off of that is, um, it makes it uneven. So I'm gonna add the stamp of dimensionals right there onto the card right above the banner. And then I'm gonna add the thank you on top of it so that I know that the stamp of dimensionals are sticking to the card and not overlapping and creating like some wonky, um, wonkiness there. Let's go ahead and finish this card with the twine while we've got it going. Um, now I followed the directions and it said 12 inches of twine and I was a little worried about this. Um, it 12 inches doesn't, it fits around but it doesn't make a bow. Um, and in the diagram, they, they show it wrapped all the way around with a bow but 12 inches is not gonna cut it. You're gonna need more than that. In fact, I would say you're probably gonna need more like 24 inches to to do that. Well, if you've already cut your twine, um, you can just tie a bow and we'll stick it on with the glue dot. And if you haven't already cut your twine, then I would recommend cutting a bigger piece. And we'll do that on the next card. I'll maybe wrap around the twine and get it figured out. So for this one, since I've already cut it, I'm just going to make a bow and I'm going to attach that with a glue dot. I think I need my other scissors. Sometimes my paper snips get gummed up and they need to be clean. So there we go. My bigger scissors work better sometimes there. So I'm gonna add this with a glue dot right there. Where's those glue dots? We can just use the same ones that came in the kit. And I want the glue dot to be right, oh, right in the corner. And then that's gonna just stick it down real good. Kind of fall into the groove. Okay, so this card is done. Isn't that really pretty? I love the way that turned out. Let's make another one. And this one, <laughs> my flowers I put toward the bottom, but this time I'm going to put my flowers toward the top as it shows in the diagram. So I'm taking off my glue dots. And this time I'll put the flowers going this way. You can do it multiple ways. It's not like there's a right or a wrong way. Just because the picture tells you to do it one way doesn't mean that's the only way to do it. And so if I'm looking at the picture, this is kind of up here. Although I hate to cover up that flower. Let's put it down here, because why not? So I'm gonna add the banner down here so that we don't cover up that flower. And we'll add some dimensionals. Oh, I forgot my little trick. Let's try that. We're going to put the dimensionals down on the card right above the banner. I think that needs another glue dot. And then put the put the, the banner on there. Now, the diagram showed only four in the corner and that's why we've got this opening here. So 
I don't think that that is enough glue dots. We need to add a few more in the center, I think, just to make sure that that stays down and has some more contact points with the adhesive. So I'm going to add, and because I pulled it off the card, I'm just going to add, um, I'm going to add them back to the corners too. So I would use a little extra glue to hold this down. And if I were stamping at home, I would definitely use my stamp and seal. <laughs> These little glue dots are just really tedious. Okay, I think we've got some good contact there. Now, if you haven't got your twine at home, you could wrap the twine around the card, which I, th I think is the intention. So I'm going to just wrap it around and then tie a bow. So I've cut with my uh, leaving some longer ends so that I can tie a bow. And it's kind of loose, so I'm just gonna, I'm gonna retie that. Oh, I need like another hand in here. <laughs> I think that works. Let's trim the, let's trim the bow. I think it would be really fun to get together with a group of friends and work on these kits. You could have like a, a kit party. You could each bring your own paper pumpkin kit or you can pick out the same kit or a different kit from the Stampin' Up! Kids collection and then you can sit down and have a card making party on your own and all the, all the work is ready for you. It's all done. All you have to do is just sit down and start making cards and start crafting. Let's add some more glue dots to this one because I don't think that four is enough. We're gonna put two more in the center for a total of six. And we're going to add this to the card. And you know what, we could, we could do it a little different. Instead of putting it on the right side, what if we put it on the left side this time? What do you think about that? Let's try that and have it go the other way. Good rub down to make sure they get connected. And then the banner is going to go. And this time let's go over here and I'm gonna like overlap that just a little bit. Come down just a hair. Where's our stamp and dimensionals? We're going to add two of those right above our banner to make sure we don't get any weird layering. <laughs> and then the, the tag is gonna go right over it. I love that, like they each look different. Which one do you like? I'm gonna just do that bow again since I already had these pieces cut. We'll just tie a bow and add it with the glue dot. Um, this card, I don't think it has any of the enamel dots on it, but you most certainly could add some of those and embellish your cards. I'm going to wait and see what we have left over after we do the other designs, and then I may add some to these cards. That's my last, last bow, and I think I'll put it over here. I'm just using the glue dots that come in the kits. And just gonna sort of smash that, smash that down. Oh, those are so pretty. They almost kind of line up, don't they? <laughs> okay, so there's card number one. We kind of did it three different ways. And I love that you have the option to change up your cards and kind of customize them how you'd like. So let's set those aside and look at card number two. For card number two, we're going to use the red flowers here and the note cards that have the gray circles. We also need the pink tag. And there are extras, so you can use those for another project. This card has happy birthday, and it also says 12 inches of twine to go around, but I have a feeling that <laughs> 12 inches is not going to be enough. 
So <laughs> we'll cut a new piece. But first, let's do our stamping. I don't think we clean this. So let's clean our stamp and then get out the happy birthday stamp. And again, if you have other cards that you need to make, you certainly could switch and do a different sentiment besides happy birthday. But of all the cards I send, I, I send a lot of thank you cards for everyone who orders with me, but I also send a lot of birthday cards. Specifically, I send birthday cards to all of my team members. So I always make sure that um, I recognize them for their birthday. I do a little shout out birthday post on our Facebook group. And I also send a card um, I really should send more happy belated birthday cards because admittedly, most of my cards get sent out late, um, but I try to still send them out in the right month. Um, <laughs> sometimes it's hard and I really should work ahead, but to work ahead, you have to actually catch up first and that is where I get stuck. <laughs> Let's go ahead and clean this one. And we'll put that away so we have it ready for next time. Um, on this card, we are going to add um, the twine. So let's cut the twine and figure out what size we need for that. So this one is saying to wrap it around and to tie a bow. So we want to leave a little string for tying a bow. Let me measure this and see. Um, I'll use their ruler. <laughs> so, um, they said 12 inches, but I think you're going to need, let's see, that's nine inches and, oh my gosh, that's really funny. <laughs> nine inches and three inches is 12 inches. Did I, okay. <laughs> that's the one I cut earlier. <laughs> <laughs> that's why it's wrong okay so 12 inches is the one I cut earlier but I needed more than that so let's measure the real one that I cut second <laughs> so we have nine inches to start and then nine inches plus um six and a half inches so we're I would say between 15 and 16 inches is what you're going to need for this card so we're going to wrap this around actually before I do that I'm going to cut the rest of my pieces so that I don't have to measure again I can just cut against one piece so 15 and a half inches is what I'm using for this card and I've got some twine left over for the next card so we'll see what we need for that one I'm going to tie the twine around and make a little bow. And if you don't like to tie around things like this, you can do the same thing that I did um, on the last card and you can just tie a bow and then just stick it on. Um, Cause I think that looks pretty too. Sometimes it's hard when you're tying bows um, to get it tight all the way around the paper. So if you struggle with that a little bit too, then you, um, you can just do like a, a little bow or leave the bow off altogether if you really struggle with twine. Oh, this one, I I kind of want to retie because I have such a little tail, but I think it'll be okay. I'm just going to cut the other tail to match the size of the first one. Okay, so that is, let's go ahead and finish a completed card. I'm gonna move the bow over to the side and then use some Stampin' Dimensionals under, underneath the tag. And we kind of covered up that, uh, that second leaf there, didn't we? Uh, oh, this is going to go on. Sorry, I'm <laughs> making a mess. This is going to go on one of the bigger pieces over here of this corrugated, it almost makes me dizzy to look at this. <laughs> this is gonna go on the bigger piece of the corrugated um, paper. And, um, and then that is going to go onto the notebook. So I love this added texture. And the, um, the diagram says we're going to use glue dots. And so, Let's add those to each corner. Again, if you have other um, 
other adhesive that you prefer at home, you might find it easier to use, but these glue dots are in the kit. So if you're only getting the kit, then you do have everything you need. The only thing that you would need to add to this kit is scissors to cut the twine, but everything else that you need is provided for you. I guess you'll need um, a wet paper towel to clean your stamps when you're done, but otherwise, <laughs> everything else, including the clear block. So uh, that's a nice way to build your clear block and stamp and ink collection is by starting off with some of these kits. And then when you feel comfortable crafting and designing, then you can get a paper trimmer and some cardstock and start to design and make cards yourself at home and cut that cardstock. And if you're at that place right now, then um, you'll definitely want to check out some of the free online classes I have. I have a couple different levels. Some of the, the online classes that I do are really um, nice and easy with a great little template. So you can create um, cards with very little supplies. And then some of them that I do, like the Whimsical Trees and the Tidings of Christmas and the Soft Succulents or Simply Succulents, those are really more for avid crafters who have all kinds of access to die cuts and, you know, other, other things like um, stamp and blend markers to embellish your cards. Okay, there's the first one. Although I guess we're almost done. We need to add, this one has some of these embellishments. So let's go ahead and add... Um, I'm just following the diagram and adding a big one, a small one, and another small one right there. That's really pretty. Let's get these other ones done. We're going to start with the twine and tie it around. this one next. If you are making this kit with me at home and I'm going too fast, you can always pause it and um, and come back <laughs> if, if you need a little time to catch up. I know that sometimes I work faster at tying um, tying bows or sometimes the stamping. And uh, I've been doing this for so long. It's been 20 years that I've been stamping and 19 years that I've been a demonstrator. So uh, sometimes I do work a little fast. It's just um, just my my nature, but it's fun to just enjoy the process. So I hope that you never feel rushed when you're crafting and you feel like you can just take your time and enjoy the process because that is half the fun is the creative therapy. Now I am adding more glue dots to my pieces than the kit description says to you. So it's possible that I'm going to run out of, um, <laughs> it's possible that I'm going to run out of these glue dots before I get to the end of my kit. So I may have to substitute some other adhesive from home. And, um, if you don't have other adhesive, then you can, um, be more conservative with your your glue dots and not use so many. Um, or you can bring in some other adhesive, like I said, even just like a glue stick. Um, Stampin' Up! does not sell a glue stick, but I know there's glue sticks everywhere um, in the school supply department, the grocery store, wherever. So um, if, you're, if you're needing a little something more um, to stick your pieces together, then that is a good option. But if you're ready to invest in some Stampin' Supplies, I really do enjoy using the Stampin' Seal. It's a double-sided tape dispenser, which I think I'll be able, you know what, we are gonna run out, I feel like, so I'm just going to uh, bring in some of my adhesive. <laughs> oh, it's so easy there to um, add that, um, that tape from the dispenser. Stampin' Dimensionals underneath the tag. 
one of my favorites. If you need a refill on Stampin' Dimensionals, you can get them in my online store. I think it's $4 for a package, which includes 300 Stampin' Dimensionals. So <laughs> it will last you for a while. I feel like I get a new package out about once a month. I feel like every time it's time for my monthly stamp club, I feel like I'm getting out a new package of Stampin' Dimensionals. Um, all right, that came together quick. Let's go ahead and use the next piece and create this card. I love just the soft pastel colors in this kit along with the neutrals of the gray and the white. It makes it really beautiful. Make sure you're pushing down really good on those glue dots so that they adhere your layers together. And I'm gonna bring that stamp and seal in so much faster and add that to the card front. We're gonna do our last tag with Stampin' Dimensionals. And embellish. Oh, that came right off. That is not going to stick, is it? Hmm, let's make it work. We're going to use a glue dot and put that clear part right back on. Ta da! <laughs> okay. There's our three finished happy birthday cards. Those are so pretty. And did you see these awesome envelopes that coordinate? There are three different envelopes. So one of them's got the pink and then yellow and the green text in there. These are note card size. So the finished card here is three and a half inches by five inches, which is still a great size to mail. So I'm not sure what the minimum size for mailing is, but you definitely um, hit it with this card. Um, all right, next up we have the third card. So we're gonna use this piece, which we already cut those, um, we already stamped the flowers on. And then uh, we need three of the yellow banners. And so we're going to stamp. The sample says best wishes. And I like that because best wishes is one of my favorite sentiments. The other one that is my favorite is in here too, thinking of you. You know what? I think I'm gonna use thinking of you. I love thinking of you and best wishes because I feel like it fits and works for any occasion, right? Thinking of you on your birthday, thinking of you, get well soon. Thinking of you with sympathy, thinking of you um, just because. Best wishes works for so many occasions because you can offer best wishes on a birthday, best wishes on Mother's Day, best wishes for Christmas, best wishes for an anniversary or a wedding or a graduation or a promotion or a new house. <laughs> so thinking of you and best wishes, if you only had two greetings um, in your stamp collection, I think that you could cover all the bases with those two greetings. It's good to have a happy birthday in there too and a thank you. And so I love that this stamp set really has them all covered. All right, thinking of you, let's go ahead and clean this off. Now I didn't do any stamping on the inside of my note cards, but you certainly could go back and add um, a stamped image with the flower, the leaves. You could do um, best wishes on the front and happy birthday on the inside. So uh, lots of different options to dress up your project even more. Um, I'm noticing there's a stamp in here that has like, it almost looks like sand or something like that. And I'm just going to have a look. I wonder if this is used on any of the projects. I don't think so. I think it's just an extra stamp in there. Um, all right, let's go ahead and do here. It looks like there's no twine on this project. So we did have plenty of twine. If you wanna cut extra for those other projects, you would have enough. We're going to use this longer banner that is straight on both ends. So we have lots of extra pieces um, 
this is going to be for the card box, but look at all these extra tags and pieces. So we can use these on other projects along with the stamp set. So let's get these going. We're going to add these to the yellow note cards. And I do have a few glue dots left, um, but I'm going to switch and use my stamp and seal because I think I'm gonna run out of the glue dots anyway. And the stamp and seal is so much faster. <laughs> so let's just, let's whip these out. This one's going all the way in the corner um, per this the directions. Um, however, you can kind of customize it however you want. So I think for the next one, oops, you know, I <laughs> I think my uh, flower was supposed to be up in the corner, but it doesn't really matter. For this one, I'm going to go right in the middle, maybe. And you know what? I'm going to go on the opposite side, because why not? <laughs> and even though this is a horizontal card, I think it could also easily be a vertical card. So let's do one. Let's do one like that. Why not mix it up? Uh, the next thing that's going to go on is this corrugated piece. That's going to be an accent for the banner. And I'm going to add that. You know what? I don't know if I like that. I think it needs a little more space to breathe. So... <laughs> Every single one of my videos is kind of a joke, but I'm always tearing up my cards. I'm changing my mind. <laughs> I'm going to I'm gonna make this a horizontal card, and I'm just going to center it here so that we have kind of an even space around. So this is going to go in the top right there. We're going to do those Stampin' Dimensionals right above the corrugated piece. Again, this just will help it from being wonky and a weird... Um, you know, un unevenness that we were seeing there. So we've got thinking of you on this one. Let's put this down in the corner here. And I think we're gonna get to embellish these cards with those green enamel dots. So that's gonna be fun. One more here. And since we have some extra twine, you 100% could add a twine bow there. I think it would be really pretty. But for sure, let's add some of these green enamel shapes. And I'm going to do the big one on the bottom and then a smaller one on top. Big one on the bottom. And I think for this one, since I've got more room on the top, I'm going to do two on the top. Oh, we have extras. Do we want to add some to that first card? Well, you know what? The picture does have them on the first card. So let's get them out. This was card number three that came together really quick. And then card number two. And on card number one, we can add those green dots because we've got some extras. So I'm going to do one, two, three, one, two, three, and one, two. That's all of them. Oh my goodness, how cute are these cards? I do love these so, so much. And like I said, this is gonna be such a cute little um, gift. So let's get these all packaged up with the cute envelopes to match. So I'm going to just fold the envelopes closed and we're gonna package them up in the gift box. So I like these pink ones with a pink flap to go with the happy birthday cards. And the yellow cards, I think, for the yellow ones. It doesn't really matter, though. They all match. 
all of the cards. I think you could mix and match these envelopes and it would not matter one bit. And then the green text to go with the card that has all the text. So this kit makes nine note cards and envelopes and all of them will fit into that little box to package up. So let's finish this whole thing and package this up cute. I'm actually going to take half of them and turn them the other way to sort of even out that space so that they're not like thicker on one side and then just slide them into the box. Oh my gosh, how cute is this? Okay, this box has um, this belly band and I think I want the belly band to go and adhere like this in the back. So it was sticky, I peeled that piece off and it's gonna stick to itself like that. And then we have these extra pieces that are going to go um, on to, oh my gosh, I love this, onto the card and a little tag that says for you. So let's get that out. That stamp is in here too. And there are two of these little tiny tags just in case you mess up. <laughs> you have two chances, actually four chances because you can probably stamp on the other side as well. Oh, that's so cute. Now, this is intended, I think, for you to tie the twine around the um, around the whole box. So let's do that because we do have some. Um, let's see here. And I'm just going to string the tag on there. And then before I tie a bow, I'm going to tie a knot to, to keep it nice and tight. And then you can rotate that. So I've tied a knot first and then I will tie a bow with the leftover twine. And move that around to be wherever we want. And I think it's going to be best to add these flowers and leaves with the Stampin' Dimensionals. I feel much more secure in having these on with Dimensionals than with those glue dots. So let's add, add our flower. Oh my goodness. Now I just have to decide who to give this gift to because it is so beautiful. I might have to get another, another kit up. This would be really nice to give to teachers as well. Okay. Oh my gosh, you guys. Here is the finished kit. So it makes nine note cards and envelopes, and then it has this beautiful packaging. So it is all ready to give as a gift. And then you have leftover tags, and you have the stamp set and the ink spot and the clear block left over from the kit. So all of this came in the Sentimental Rose card kit. You can get this in my online store at juliedavison.com slash shop. There are many more card kits 
kits that are available, project kits that are available in that same location. I'll put the link in the video description so you can check it out. But I wanted to share with you a couple other finished samples to show you some of the examples of the kits that are available. So here's one down here. This one um, I can't actually remember the name of it, but it makes two different cards that are a little bit more masculine. You've got, these are full size cards with the beautiful envelopes that go with them. And the stamp set is really fabulous. It has all these sentiments in here as well as um, labels like father and son and brother and husband and grandpa. So this is a really fun one for making masculine cards. So here's a card kit that's available in the kits collection. There's also this one, which is pictured right here. Again, I can't remember the name of it. I want to say anchors away but that's that may not be right let me move this over and show you this little one comes with a cute um a cute little stamp set and then it comes with four boxes and each box has a set of five cards so you get all the pieces to make these cute little mini cards how amazing would this be to take with you on a trip and to leave little thank you cards i was just talking to char and she said oh my goodness i could bring that with me on my next cruise i think that would be a really fun um really fun to either gift to someone or um, to, to use the little notes yourself and these cute little boxes. You can either use them to package up the little note cards or if you're sending off or using the note cards, you could also use the little box to package up a gift. Isn't that fun? So all of these kits and more are available in my online store at juliedavison.com slash shop. Make sure to check out the kits collection whether you're purchasing for yourself or getting a gift to give to a paper crafting friend. Thank you so much for tuning in today. Be sure to come back at 7 p.m. tonight for Thursday Night Stamp Therapy and come back tomorrow at 1 p.m. to see what is next in our 12 Days of Christmas Countdown Box. See you soon!